Hey everyone, in this video, we are gonna take a look at the UV wireless bridge. It's called the AI Smart Wireless Bridge. Now I do wanna clarify, that's not AI in terms of the way we think about it as in chat GPT. It's more referring to AI as in the fact that it's smart enough to automatically pair with little to no configuration. So we'll get this box open. We'll take a look at what comes inside. We'll also go over some of the feature sets of this device. This is the model CPE688 and it's a one gig wireless bridge. So if you're interested in learning more about the UV wireless bridge, then stick around. All right, so the first thing I wanna cover or address is what is a wireless bridge for those of you that don't know. So we're looking at draw IO here and basically I want to diagram this out for you as simply as possible. So let's just try to find some diagrams of a house. We'll use this one right here. We'll make it a little larger like that. Let's just say this was your house. And then out on your property somewhere, you had another building, let's say a detached garage or a barn or maybe a cabana house. So let's go ahead and find another structure here. We'll use this one here. And this one's out on your property. Okay, so now you have network in your main house and you want to get your network to extend out to this secondary location. Again, whether it be a barn, a cabana house, uh, whatever the case may be, a detached garage. Well, sometimes you can't physically get a cable to connect between the two. For example, let's take this arrow here. It would be ideal if we can just grab an ethernet cable off the main network and just run it out to this location. But a lot of times that's not possible without trenching and putting conduit in the ground. So another solution is to actually use wireless networking devices called wireless bridges. So let me get diagrams of, I'm not sure I'm gonna find a wireless bridge, but we'll just use the, the Wi-Fi emblem for now. We'll drag this on here and we'll connect, let's just assume that this is uh, one side of the wireless bridge. And if we put this on the secondary structure here like that, now we have a connection between structure number one, your house, and structure number two, be it whatever, um, wirelessly. So think of a wireless bridge as extending the network from the main house out to the secondary structure wirelessly over a wireless connection. Think of it as just using a long ethernet cable to continue the network out to the secondary structure. All right, looking at UV's website, I wanna go over the features with you, but before I do, I just wanna thank UV for sending this wireless bridge out to me for my review. Again, this is the model CPE688. Let's take a closer look at its specs. So it operates on a 5.8 gigahertz frequency. It has one gig ethernet ports. It claims to cover five kilometers, which translates to a little over three miles. And again, that is perfect line of sight. It comes with built-in 14 dBi high gain antennas. It's got passive PoE and that is 24 volt. It claims to be one button pairing. So we're gonna test that out shortly and it says it's designed for outdoor, and I believe it's IP66 rated. That's what the manual says, although printed on the exterior of the box that it came in, it says IP65, but I believe that's just an error. It says IP66 in the manual, and it also shows IP66 as we scroll down here to this chart. Looking at the chart, the price is retail $199.99, it uses the following CPUs, MT7621A and the MT7612. It has DDR3, again, five kilometers, 5.8 gigahertz, non-blocking signal. It has four gigabit ethernet ports, two on each device. Again, the 14 dBi dual polarization antenna. It operates on the 802.11 AC Wi-Fi protocol. And it claims to have a data rate of 13 megabits per second max. And here again, you could see it's IP66 rated. So again, these are the specs. If you want to check out and learn more about this device on your own, you can go to UV's website at ueevii.com.
That's UV.com. Let's go ahead and see what comes inside the box. Inside the box, UV includes two wireless bridge units. One will act as a transmitter, the other will act as a receiver. You get a user manual, two Cat5e Ethernet cables, and for those of you who are interested in, they're terminated in 568B. Two 24 volt passive PoE adapters and two metal pole mounts. Okay, taking a closer look at one of the wireless bridge units, you can see it's got the UV branding on the front. It's nine and a half inches in height, three and three quarter inches in width. It's made out of plastic, but it's all one molded unit. You could even see that the pole mounting bracket is molded right in on the back. So it is pretty watertight and dust tight. The bottom of the unit on the back, it has the information sticker. The only part of the unit that is removable is this right here, and I'll show you that in a second. Look at the side of the unit. It's got our status indicators. It's got our signal strength, our LAN 2 and LAN 1 indicators, and our power indicator. Let's go ahead and remove the bottom and take a look and see what we have there. So looking from left to right, you have your setup reset button, a LAN 1 port, digital display, an AB switch, which determines which is the transmitter and which is the receiver. A is the transmitter, B is the receiver. You have the second LAN port, and then finally a 12 volt DC port, which is not included in the box, but UV did include the two 24 volt PoE adapters. All right, so what I want to do now is get these units fired up for the very first time. I have not done this. I want to take you guys along for the ride. The instructions say it's pretty simple. We're going to follow the instruction manual. Basically, it says get them fired up. It takes about a minute or two for them to fire up. And then we're going to use the setup button on each of the two units to make sure they're on the same channel. Now, the dip switches are already set out of the box. This one is the transmitter, it's set to A, and this one is the receiver, it is set to B. So without any further ado, let's get this wired up and see what we can do. Okay, so let me get the first unit wired up. I'm not using the supplied cables because I need a little longer length, but I'm gonna take the first cable, grab one of the PoE, adapters we're going to plug into the PoE side and then we're going to take the other side of that cable and plug it into the transmitter into the first LAN port just like that and then I'm going to grab a network cable I'm actually using one of the supplied cables to plug into my switch. I'm going to plug the other end of the network cable into the LAN port on the PoE adapter. And then I'm going to plug that one in and get this unit to fire up. Okay, so that's one. And we're going to take another Ethernet cable. And we are going to do the same thing. We're going to plug into the PoE side and then plug the other side into the LAN 1 port on the receiving unit and then get this unit plugged in to power and get this one booted up. Okay, so while these units are booting up, let me just tell you what my goal is here. My goal is to get them booted up and paired, and then what I'm gonna do is plug in my laptop. You might be able to see a little of it over here. I'm gonna plug it into the receiving side of the bridge, and my only hope is that I get an IP address. They're actually too close right now to actually get any kind of real speed tests or anything like that. My only goal that I want to achieve here is a successful pairing so that this laptop here gets an IP address through the wireless bridge. So let me see how these guys are doing. So we have a solid status light here and it says it's on channel one, you guys can't see that. And this one seems to be booted up with a solid light. Solid display um, port means that, if, in other words, if the information is solid, it means it's successfully paired from what I read in the instructions. So. Let me now go ahead 
and get my laptop plugged into the other side, the receiving side of the receiving unit. Now, my laptop does not have a DHCP address at this point, and I will show you that. Let me switch over to the computer. Okay, let me bring up the system preferences for you. And if I go into network, you can see now I have nothing. There's everything's red here. If this works successfully, this one right here, this Thunderbolt Ethernet should light up green and I should get an IP address here. So that said, let me flip back over to the wireless bridge. So you can see I'm actually physically plugging in the Ethernet cable from the computer over into the secondary LAN port on the wireless bridge. Now let's flip back over to the laptop and let's see what happens. That took no time at all. You can see now that the Thunderbolt Ethernet is lit up green and we have an IP address of 192.168.25.122. Let me just bring up a web browser and let's go to Google and search someplace we haven't been. Let's search for an elephant so we know it's not pulling up anything from the cache. And there you go, and it seems to be pretty speedy. Let me uh, bring up a ping tool, and we'll ping out to Google servers. And you can see here we are getting a successful ping. So that was pretty simple. They both seem to have booted up right out of the box, set to channel one. So. Depending on the environment, I guess we could set to different channels to get different results. But for right now, I am completely thrilled with how simple this was right out of the box to set up. Completely perfect for a home user who doesn't want to get into all the detailed settings of a prosumer to professional uh, point to point wireless bridge system. Again, if you are just setting up in your home environment and you need to get out to a detached garage or out to a barn or a cabana pool house, um, these guys, if they work as advertised, would be a good solution. In the next video, I'd like to take them outside, like I said earlier, and set them up on temporary poles. I'll get them spread as far apart as I can. Now, there's no way I could test the five kilometers, but I will try to get them as far apart as I can. We'll use a portable power unit to uh, fire up the receiving side and we'll take the laptop out. We'll get the master or the transmitter out in the backyard connected to the network with a long ethernet cable and we'll do some testing. So, Anyway, let me know what you think so far. Stay tuned for part two. Let me know down in the comments below. Put your comments down below. Uh, if you like the video, like I always say, please give it a thumbs up. Please check out some of the other videos I have here listed up above. Remember to subscribe, like, and share. And I want to thank you guys, as I always do, for using my Amazon affiliate links. I know they don't change your price, but they do help out the channel. Once again, my name is Tony, Quick Tech Solutions. As always, please stay safe. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.